it's Liz Ewell from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today for another Top Tip Tuesday. I'm a UK-based independent stamping up demonstrator working across the UK, France, Germany, Austria and the Netherlands. And very soon, we're waiting for the date, Belgium and Ireland. Do let me know if you want information about when you can join my team or shop from me if you are based in Belgium or Ireland. You can find all my contact details on my website and there's a link to that below. So let's have a look at what we're doing today. Pastels. So these are the Soft Pastels assortment. They're in the annual catalogue. They're fairly well hidden. Let me find them for you. They come under colouring tools which is always good to know. So let's see, uh, tools, colouring tools, one, two, eight. And yes, they should come under colouring tools. No, no, they don't. That is, no, they're on assortments and bundles because they're a soft pastels assortment. So they're here, they're eight pounds 50, which is amazing value. Um, I will talk you through the colours because they may not be that obvious. So we have from, let's do from left to right, Daffodil Delight, Mango Melody. They look almost identical here, but they do look different when you use them. Uh, Poppy Parade, Gorgeous Grape, Mossy Meadow. I want to say Coastal Cabana. And that would be right. Um, Granny Apple Green and Knight of Navy. Hmm, maybe. Anyway, I'm going to do five different ways of using them for colouring. I've got some water painters, but this one I've got 70% rubbing alcohol in. This one's just plain water. I've got Q-tips, which are fairly traditional for using with, um, with pastels. And I also have a blender pen. So, oh, did I say cotton buds? Yes, I did. So I've prepared a little, not a lot, just a little. Um, so I've already stamped the same image, which I've got mounted up here, which is a small image from the Happiness Abounds stamp set. Um, and it's this image here that I've chosen just because it's small so we can see things next to each other. So I'm gonna start with water. Now, there are two ways you can do this. You can either Pick up your chalk and scrape some of the powder onto a, an acrylic block and then add water so you're mixing the chalk with water on the block or you can just use your your paint uh, your water painter and go straight in and just color now it will dry quite quickly because we're working on ordinary basic white paper. Uh, this isn't the thick, it's just the ordinary basic white paper. Um, so it does dry quite quickly with water because it's not, it's not made to take water. So it will, it will just absorb it really quickly. Watercolor paper is made to um, not dry instantly with water. You can put a lot of water on it the fibres won't break down, but um, you can just you can just keep adding water and it will be fine. But it will stay wetter for longer than ordinary paper. So I'm choosing Poppy Parade because it is a nice bright colour so you can see what's happening. Um, I will go in with uh, one of the yellows. Now to clean, as ever, just this is an old face towel face cloth so just squeeze your brush and it will come clean I've had this one for quite a long time so it is stained now this is the mango melody which is slightly darker in the palette than the daffodil delight but not a lot uh, and I will bring out I'll bring out a strip of paper in a minute and we'll go through all of the colors And again, I'm just going to clean off my brush by squeezing the barrel. 
Let me bring that up so you can have a quick look. I know this isn't brilliantly focused at that height, but then I'm going to use some granny apple green. And again, I'm just cut. Oh, you can't see it because my, my face is in the way. Um, I'm just coloring straight onto the, um, onto the chalk and just adding that. So very fine, very, you know, small amount. So that's water. Now we're going to repeat that, but with the 70% rubbing alcohol. Um, so let's, again, I'm just using a slightly different area of the chalk and coming in with that. And I will also do the rub test when we've finished just so that we can see which one is um, is set more because chalk will it's powder um, back in the day we used to spray hairspray at it to it's a bit wet the brush um, but yes we used to spray hairspray at chalks to help them set and not rub off now, if you want a more intense colour, you just wiggle your brush onto your chalk a little more. And you can, of course, layer up. And you get more opportunity to do that with the alcohol because the alcohol will itself dry quicker. So you're not saturating your paper. You won't break down the paper quite so much. But strangely, and this may be because it's 70% rather than 100% rubbing alcohol, um, the water actually is giving a more intense colour. And you would think that the alcohol, because it's not diluting the powder so much, you would think that that would be more intense. It may be partly climatic. It's quite hot in here today. I mean, not hot by a lot of standards, but from a UK point of view, it's in the high 20s in here, so that's quite hot. So again, just squeeze your barrel to clean the nib. It is it is stained, but it's only stained. And then I'm going into my Mango Melody again and just adding the centre of my flowers. And then I'll do the same again um, as I did before and add some granny apple green leaves. Now, if you don't want to use a watermarker, although they're lovely, uh, the only thing you have to know about watermarkers is that the barrel unwinds the wrong way, as in not the way you would assume it's going to unwind. Um, it took us all a little while to get our heads around that. So let me show you those two. So they're very similar. Now I stamped in Memento, uh, knowing that I was going to use alcohol. So now this is a brand new straight out of packet um, blender pen. It's one I've had for quite a while actually. Um, yeah, it is wet. So. I'm just going to do the same with this and it is this actually is I can already feel that it's quite rough on the paper but you do get that nice blend because you can you can do more shading because the the ink will run out I say the ink the powder so it works in a very similar way to using our inks. But it doesn't feel right on the chalk. It, there's resist on the chalk. So although it works, not my favorite so far. As I say there's this sort of resistance which makes sense because it's the it's the powder that's probably clogging up the nib of my blender pen so 
So that's all red. Let's scribble that off so that we get a clean nib. That's clean but stained. So again, Mango Melody. Let's be consistent. And then Granny Apple Green. Now, if you shopped with me last month, so in July, your thank you card from me will be using um, the pastels, but using them with water. Um, I won't spoil the surprise just yet. Right, so Cotton Bud, I love these because these are from Waitrose. It's a UK supermarket. And we've even got non-bleached. This is cardboard and it's non-bleached. Um, cardboard. So this time I'm going to go the other way around. I'm going to add a little dot of Mango Melody in the middle of my flower. Now this is going to be the most subtle because this is just powder. So that's the yellow. Now let's come in and pick up some red. Now I've seen people use makeup brushes for this, all sorts. Now of course if you're doing a larger image you can use a sponge dauber, that would work. But this is a very subtle finish. It's not, it's not bright like the others. I guess it's more what you would expect. Of course back in the day when we first started using pastels, they would come in like a paint box with um, a crocodile clip at the end of a piece of stick um, and you'd pick up little balls of cotton wool. Certainly that's how I remember them when, we, when I first started using them. So that's that. Let's try and do the granny apple green. This could be interesting. I think it might just be a sort of somewhere in the region of the leaf rather than on the leaf. So that's what we've got so far. So this is really subtle. But now I'm going to use Versamark. And I'm going to use Versamark and the cotton buds again. So I'm just going to nestle my Versamark in there. And this time, let's get the yellow can't see it particularly well, but it's there. There we are. And the Versamark is acting as a glue, for want of a better word. So that's the centres. Now let's go for the, the petals. And I'm just going to kind of rub round. Trying to avoid where I've put the Mango Melody. One, two, three, four, five. That's all my flowers done. And now the leaf and the stalks, or the leaves and the stalks, I should say. I'm actually going to use the other end because that one's broken down. And then I'll take my, ah, wrong one. Then I'll take my water painter with water in it and show you the colors. So that, doesn't show up particularly well on camera. Hopefully it'll show up better on the pictures, but that's this is just really picking up the outline. Then we've got the very pale here, just the pastel and the cotton bud, blender pen, alcohol, water. So let's see. Definitely feel as if I'm picking up pastel. That's not so bad. That's rough but I think that's because of 
the blender pen working on the paper. That's nice and smooth and is I am picking up colour and again I'm picking up colour. So it doesn't set um, using these methods but it's it's pretty. So let's grab a piece of white card and again it's just ordinary basic white. Did I say whisper white earlier? Ooh, a horrible feeling I think I did. Anyway so this is Daffodil Delight, so let's get it nicely worked up. I'll actually, just add a real blob there. Now I don't want to go over the same bit of paper too much because we all know what happens when you put moisture on paper. It doesn't like it. That's the Mango Melody. Poppy Parade. I'm going to try that Daffodil Delight again because I need to get... I think I just need to get more... more, more, really. That's a bit better. Right. Gorgeous grape. Mossy meadow. Oops, far too much water. So this is mossy meadow. Coastal, I've done it again. Squeezing too hard. Coastal Cabana. But you can obviously go through to pool party with that just by putting less water and, oh sorry, less um, powder and more water. And then Granny Apple Green. And now this is the one that they claim to be Knight of Navy. I'm not convinced by calling that Knight of Navy. I think it's a very nice specific point. Or possibly a starry sky, but not Knight of Navy. So I will, I will, yeah. So there are the colours. Now I'll just grab a piece of shimmery white and see what happens when we put them on there because shimmery white obviously is takes water better. So let's see what happens when we use shimmery white rather than just basic white. So this is our Daffodil Delight again. So let's get that nicely worked. got some blue on there still but let's give that a good clean mango melody you can definitely see that this is a different colour to the daffodil delight poppy parade I would say that your best paper for using wet pastels is shimmery white because it's working beautifully on this. So it will stamp nicely. Shimmery white is that nice smooth surface. Let's find a clean bit of face cloth. Mossy meadow. Coastal Cabana, complete with an eyelash, I think, or a cat cat hair. Yeah, that's lovely. Oh, I like bringing that out to a paler colour. 
granny apple green and the if you say so knight of navy yeah no that's I think I'll I think I'll allow Starry Sky. Not not convinced that that's Knight of Navy, but I will go Starry Sky. And then just clean my brush off again. See them next to each other. So you can see they are exactly the same colour. It's just taking much nice, much more nice, much more nicely. It's a much nicer. It's, it's a, an easier colour on the shimmer white. Let's see what happens if I... Yeah, it's still coming off. Um, but it's good. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Um, don't think that the pastels are just for using as pastels. They are amazing watercolours. And obviously, if you want to take powder off the... Um, off the, the sticks you can then mix your own colors because you can mix a little bit of the the blue with a bit of the um, granny apple green to get a different green shade all sorts of things and because you've got your primary colors you can basically mix any color just by mixing your primary colors together preferably only two of them at a time because if you mix all three you get a lovely shade of brown anyway Thank you very much indeed for watching me. Let me just bring that up again. Thank you very much for watching me today. I hope you found that helpful. I will be live at 11 o'clock on Tuesday, today being Tuesday, uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. So if you're around for that, that would be great. To get a reminder, just click that subscribe button and hit the alert bell and you'll know when I've uploaded new videos or am going live. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Uh, if questions, comments, pop those below the description bar. There's a comments area. That would be fantastic. I'll have the supplies I've used listed in the description bar as well. So if you want to go and shop with me and try out my customer service, I would be absolutely thrilled. I am aiming to earn the incentive trip and I'm a little bit way away yet. So if you can help me by purchasing from me, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye bye.